Guard Coach Charles. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. South Blue. Pledge of Allegiance. To the Now we have Heather Lynn here with us tonight to uh, sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. for all the groceries they brought in, all the volunteers. Um, anyway, let's just give them all a hand. So I'm going to turn the mic over now to Fire Marshal Jimmy Williams. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, what a wonderful day. Uh, we've, we've been waiting for this cooler weather. Hopefully we all get to enjoy it. If many of the firefighters get to enjoy it without running any more fires, we're, we're grateful for that. We're grateful for the day that's given us. Uh, as a firefighter in Montgomery County, I want to tell you a little bit of how I became involved in this fire in the Magnolia area. I'm born and raised in Montgomery County and I've been a firefighter for the past 31 years. I currently serve as the Montgomery County Fire Marshal and as a volunteer firefighter with two of our local volunteer fire departments here in Montgomery and Walker counties. I came to work at the command post on the very first day of the fire as the fire was racing from the, the Grimes County and Montgomery County line toward all of the homes down around 1488 and 1774. 
And what I saw to come together was an effort from all of Southeast Texas that eventually would involve the rest of Texas and many states across the nation to extinguish a fire this community's never seen. As I said, I've been a firefighter for 31 years. I've seen some large wildfires, but I've never seen a wildfire behave and act and get as large and threaten as many homes. In some estimates, we saved, as firefighters, over 10,000 homes that potentially were going to be overrun by fire. And that brings me to the first group that I want to recognize, and that's all the firefighters in this room. If you're not standing, please stand up at this time. I've had an opportunity to talk with some of the residents that were evacuated. I had a, a, a quite a bit of conversations during the fire as well. Our office, the Montgomery County Fire Marshal's office, we were charged by the county judge's office with providing information to the community about when areas were going to be evacuated, when those folk could be returned to their areas, and we were doing the damage assessment so that even if you were evacuated, you could know if your home survived. So we talked with many of the residents, and what I want to share to you, with each of you is that those of you that, that lost homes, although that was a tragedy, we lost no lives. And in the rest of Texas, we can't say that. And by heeding those evacuation orders and moving out of the, the way of this fire, that's really the only thing that we can do in response to a major incident like that. And the community responded. And then when the fire occurred, the community responded in an even greater manner. And that was all of the volunteers that came together. If any of you had the opportunity to be at Magnolia West High School or one of the shelter sites, you saw the community taking care of its own and then taking care of our firefighters. I spoke to firefighters, came in from all over the country, and the, this common theme was how well taken care of they were by this community. Which brings me to the second group that I want to recognize, and that's all of you that played a role in gathering supplies and getting our firefighters what they needed to combat this fire. You would stand up if you played a role anywhere in the volunteer process. I want to tell you that without your assistance, we couldn't have put in the hours that we did and did the work that we could do on those, those horrible days and nights. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up real quickly with, with my thought for the day is where do we go from here? As a community, in 31 years as a firefighter, I've never seen this in Montgomery County. We all have to be aware that there's a danger in the woods. Many of us moved to Montgomery County. As I said, I was born and raised in the 60s. There were only 27,000 people in all of Montgomery County. Now we have almost 500,000 living amongst the natural forests. We have to be aware that there is a danger with living so close to nature. A few years ago, many of us didn't think much about hurricanes. Hurricane Ike changed our way of thinking, and now we have a plan for how to deal with a hurricane. So what we need to think about now as a community, Montgomery County needs to think about a plan for dealing with wildfires. Most of the forecasts say that we're going to see this again. It may not be next year, but maybe the year after that. We're in a cycle where we're going to continue to see the drought over the next several years. So in working with that, our office in conjunction with the Texas Forest Service, we're doing community education. We're partnered. Uh, Jared, Jared Carnes, where you at? Raise your hand. There's Jared. Jared's our community partner with the Texas Forest Service. And afterwards, we'll be outside here. We have a table set up. And we'd like to talk to everyone that has a community about things you can do to make your home safer from the threat of wildfire. We're there to help. We have lots of information. We have a lot of expertise. Unfortunately, some of it came from fighting these fires. We saw how the fires took homes. And we want to help and spread that lesson out to the community. So if you would take a few minutes when you leave, come and visit with Jerry or I over the Texas Forest Service table. Give us an opportunity to, to help you out where we can go in the future. And again, I've never been prouder to serve as a firefighter in Montgomery County, and I've never been more, more motivated that we need to tackle this problem now before we have another major wildfire. Thank you for the opportunity to come up here, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pass it to the next speaker, which was...
a gentleman that I've worked with for many years, ever since I came to work in the fire marshal's office, and I can tell you he was there from the, from the get-go, in the command post, supporting our operations, and that's County Judge Saddle. Thank you. You know, this is one of the first times I've had the microphone at a, the right level. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, thank you for the invitation to be here. Uh, I want to start off by saying what a pleasure it is to work with the people you see on this stage. I work with them every day. Congressman Brady, thank you so much for coming to this event. Uh, the congressman is behind the scenes, on the scenes. Uh, he does he does more than I could even I don't have time to even talk about the things he does for Montgomery County. He's my congressman and congressman I appreciate all you do. Now, I wish we had all the fire chiefs up here. We had so many fire chiefs I've lost track. We have uh, Probably one of the most important ones, the Magnolia Fire Chief, who is on the front lines, I believe, 23 hours out of every 24. Is that right, Chief? And sometimes 24 out of 24 hours. Just give him a hand. Also on the law enforcement end, our con my constable, my, uh, I give him a hard time. My favorite constable, David Hill. What a great job he did. <laughs> Sheriff Tommy Gage was there day and night. And I can't leave out his chief deputy, who is my, my top assistant who is the Assistant Deputy Director for Emergency Management, Chief Deputy Randy McDaniel. Let's give him a hand, even though he's not here. Your Commissioner, one of my favorite commissioners, Craig Doyle, was there day and night, helping with the road crews, helping with the bulldozers, doing so much for Precinct 2. Craig, thank you for being there, and thank you for what all you do. Of course, we know Jimmy Williams. We know what he did, our fire marshal. Uh, great job, Jimmy. Uh, uh, we could not have done it without you and your leadership. Let's give him one more round of applause. Let me say this. I live on a little track of land between Montgomery and Dobbin. I can see the smoke of this fire from my house, and I live near 105. Before it was even announced as a serious fire, as a serious threat to this county, I knew it was because I could see the evidence. Let me say this. Luckily, we had the Incident Response Team 4, the federal guys, come out of California with the airplanes. What a great job they did. But let me say this. The heavy lifting continued to be the local first responders, the local firefighters that continued on the job for seven days and seven nights. It could not have been done without you. Thank you. I'm about to get the hook. I've already taken up my two minutes and more. But thank you all so much for the invitations tonight. Next, I have the opportunity to introduce a good friend of mine, someone I've worked with for 21 years on Commissioner's Court. As you know, he worked for Malcolm Purvis for uh, 10 years before he became Commissioner. But please welcome Commissioner Craig Doyle.
thank you, thank you for the opportunity to be here with you this evening. And uh, I can assure you that my words will be very brief because Deborah told me that they would be. Uh, now, where is Kristen? I don't know how many of you saw the emails and all the efforts that went forth from Kristen and Deborah and the whole organization group that put this together. Let's give them a big round of applause for the efforts this evening. They, they did a tremendous job, and, and, and not, there's not enough words to express the gratitude that we have for all of the firefighters for every, from every department that was here, from all across this part of the state, from all of our first responders to our law enforcement personnel, and, and I would be remiss if I did not tell you that, that the representation from Precinct 2 that you saw most of the time was Charlie Riley. And Charlie, I thank you for all that you did. He's there day and night, cooking barbecues, singing songs. I, I suspect he may be sweeping floors when we leave here tonight. But Charlie, thank you for all that you do so very much. You know, they say that the, the character of a community can be judged by the quality of its volunteers. Look around you. This is a community of character. And it, it makes me proud to serve as your commissioner. And I thank you for the honor of allowing me to do that. And I thank you for who you are, for what you do, for the fact that people across this country know where Magnolia, Texas is today because of the efforts, not only of our firemen, not only of our law enforcement personnel, not only of our emergency responders, but of you, the volunteers that came together and made things happen to protect our community. So thank you so much for the opportunity to be here and give yourselves a big round of applause. I guess I want to follow in order here and introduce the next speaker. You know, MISD was a true partner in this effort. They opened up the school to provide opportunities for the firefighters to have a place to stay, where all the volunteers brought food to feed the firemen that were here. So please help me welcome the superintendent of Magnolia ISD, Dr. Todd Stevens. Well, on behalf of Magnolia ISD, our parents and our students, our board of trustees and our community. It's an honor to be here tonight to thank our first responders for everything that they did for us during the Tri-County fires. So I started thinking about what it is I needed to say to thank you and I said, you know, as a school superintendent, I think it'd be great if I brought in the perspective of some of our kiddos in this. And we had a writing sort of uh, a contest that went on through our school district for our kiddos to sort of explain how they felt about the fire and how they felt about the work that our first responders did. And so I just want to take this time and read the response of one of our kids. This is from a fifth grader, a fifth grader at, at uh, Williams Elementary School. This is by Garrett. And this is his perspective of the fire. I was watering my yard when a ginormous plane came out of nowhere. <laughs> it was so low it probably was cutting the trees. Well, at least it looked that way. I watched it go on its run to put out the fires. When the DC-10 came back round, there was a little plane in front of it. I was told it was a spotter for the DC-10. So it knew where to drop the fire retardant on the grass in front of the fire to slow it down so the firefighters would have time to get it put out. It was so cool when it dropped. I saw a picture of the DC-10 dropping retardant behind a dozer. It was so close that the dozer driver was scared out of his seat every time it made a run. <laughs> you gotta remember, this is a fifth grader now. The DC-10 was everywhere on the news. At my house, at my aunt's ranch, I am telling you it was all over the place. It was pretty cool when it was going on. The day it started, I was evacuated and a news helicopter was in the way of the DC-10. They kept telling them to move, so the DC-10 made a pass and the helicopter moved from that spot and went higher the helicopter pilot was probably pretty frightened by the size of the DC-10. As the fire grew, my parents and I were listening to the scanner, and they said, it's jumped FM 1488, and it's moving faster than ever. And when my dad heard that, 
He said, we're getting out of Dodge. <laughs> I was just getting out of the shower, and I didn't know what was going on. And as soon as my dad said, pack your stuff up, I got so scared I couldn't see straight. We stayed at my grandmother's house, and that's in the center of town. As three days passed, the fire grew larger and larger. The smoke got over my grandma's house, and the ashes started to fall from the smoke. It looked black and white, but it didn't smell. We were evacuated again, and this time we went to Navasota, where my aunt lives on a hill. As we were taking the long way to her house, the smoke made a mushroom cloud that blocked out the sun. When we got to the ranch, you could see the helicopters through binoculars hovering around the fire. When we were allowed to go back home, the fire flared back up, but we stayed at home. The police kept escorting people into their homes to get their things. All you heard were the fire trucks and the helicopters. It was like a war zone. When we heard that the fire was out, we were so happy, but we were still sad for the people that lost their homes. We wanted to help them out so bad, we were not sure what to do for them. I wanted to shake every person's hand and thank them for helping out put the fire out. Well, on behalf of Garrett, on behalf of 12,000 kiddos in Magnolia ISD, I want you first responders to know you are appreciated. From the bottom of our hearts, we thank you. God bless you, and God bless Magnolia, the community of unity. Thank you. Our next speaker needs no introduction. He's known all over this county. Sheriff Tommy Gage. Thank you, and it's great to be here today. And let me tell you, I'm, I'm proud to serve as your sheriff, to have the opportunity to work with the outstanding men and women that uh, serve as public servants in this county. It's, uh, it's a great opportunity for me to live in this county, to have the support of the citizens that we have, especially in this Tri-County fire, but that we have every day with the citizens in this county. And for all those that, that came from different areas uh, with the federal law enforcement, state law enforcement, local law enforcement, all the firefighters, when you stand there and see all these fire engines from, from fire departments all over the country and these guys out there 24-7 uh, sleeping on the ground, on a fire truck, on the floor, in the school, and, and all it, it just uh, it makes you proud to be a part of this so it's an honor for me to to have the opportunity also to serve with uh, charlie riley and the cooking team that that provided uh the meal today uh charlie always does an outstanding job and, and i'm glad to be a part of that and so thank you for coming and supporting our firefighters first responders and law enforcement thank you very much and then opportunity to introduce uh, my friend, my brother in law enforcement, Constable David Hill. You know, I'm proud to be from Magnolia. I, I, I get to telling folks what y'all did, y'all volunteers did, and I catch myself saying it's, it's amazing. Well, it's not amazing, it's Magnolia. This is what Magnolia does. I've, I've never been let down by this, this community. The firemen deserve a special pat on the back. We saw them fight fires to within six inches of these houses, literally six inches. They didn't back off. They made sure and they saved many, many homes. More than, we'd have lost a lot more had it not been for you firemen. I wanna thank you personally. We had help from all over the United States. We got a fireman right over here from Florida. We 
got an assistant fire chief from Pumpkin. And for those who don't know where Pumpkin is, check with him later. I thought Magnolia was small. <laughs> Cecil Bale provided more assistance uh, than you can shake a stick at. He had a, yeah, she give him a round of applause. That's what I want to hear. He had a fundraiser planned right here. He was going to make lots of money, and he's running for state rep, and we appreciate that. He was going to make a lot of money, but when he saw the need, he fed the people that needed to be feeded, fed. Uh, fed some 5,000 plates of food instead of having that fundraiser. So we all see Cecil. Y'all thank him and pat him on the back, all right? I saw some officers from Harris County a while ago out there. I don't know if they're still here. The Harris County Sheriff's Department came up here and helped us, worked hand in hand. I saw three of them out in the front of Woodland Lakes, and they flagged me down and said, uh, Constable, you won't believe what these people did. They fed us home-cooked hot meals all the time we're here. They fed us dessert. They brought us aspirin for our headaches. They took care of all our needs. And I said, that, what can you say? That's Magnolia. I'm real proud, real proud. I call this God's country because it is. God blessed us and God held his hand over us. Yes, we lost a few places but not near what we could have. And it was God's hand that stilled the fire. I want to, yes sir, I want to thank, uh, the sheriff brought out one of the best pieces of equipment that you can imagine. Tommy Gage has a uh, first class crisis response team and a crisis, uh, what do you call that thing? A mobile some command center, that's what it is. It is state of the art. If y'all don't get have a chance to see that, y'all ought to ease over to Conroe and get the sheriff to give you a personal tour. Sheriff, we appreciate it out here. I'd love to stay up here and thank each one of y'all, the ones that helped. There was a gentleman up in Grimes County, uh, Waller County, I'm sorry, Waller County that lost his house. He, and I guarantee you, he called me three times a day to see if there was anything he could do to help us. That's what this community is all about right there. And I take, thank you. I want to introduce our next speaker. Oops. We run off the page. This will be Chief of Police, Chief of City of Magnolia, uh, Chief of Barra. I want to take a few moments to thank some of the outer police agencies that first came out. Magnolia has the smallest police department in this whole area. We're only uh, 10 police officers. But I gotta tell you, when this first thing happened at two o'clock in the afternoon on Monday, it was Labor Day, we put out a call requesting assistance because immediately uh, the fire department told us that we're gonna have to start evacuating some homes. Do we have anybody here from Tom Ball PD? Well, I wanna take a, a special moment to say thank you to Chief Hawk over there. He sent us four units from Tomball, and we got another four from Conroe. So within a matter of minutes, they were here and they were uh, helping our local law enforcement evacuate whatever areas the Sheriff's Department uh, helped us to evacuate. Now, it's also important to point out what is standing. How many of you have noticed that there's a cross on 1774, just north of 1486? It was, it's awesome, it's still standing, and everything around it burned. So I, I think this is a tremendous symbol from the Lord Almighty that we as a, as a community can come together and we can stand under a symbol of something as powerful as Jesus Christ himself. So I just want to take a, a couple of moments and recognize that. Also, I think most of us recognize a part of scripture where the Lord says, let the children come to me. When we went out there and started surveying some of the areas, there's a lot of people that needed some assistance, and there were no jurisdictional boundaries. We went wherever they needed us, just about every law enforcement agency. There were some, some swing sets that were left standing in some of these homes. There's nothing there but the swing set, so it's very symbolic that just a few hours before that, children were playing. It was devastating to see that lives were changed permanently. Matter of fact, at Williams Elementary, they put a wonderful, wonderful tribute to the first responders, and the secretary from Williams Elementary stood up, and she made a very heartfelt speech when she said, she lost everything, but they still have the most important thing, and that's themselves, their health, and their family. So God bless all of you for coming together. We truly are the community of unity. God bless you, and 
Mr. Porter. Thank you, Chief Avera. And I'd like to introduce next someone that we owe a great debt of gratitude for his dedication and work during this entire ordeal. I don't know that uh, anyone could have handled it any better. And personally, I'd like to say thank you to Fire Chief Benson. It's unfortunate that we have to come together at a time like this uh, after a tragedy. But I'd like to start by uh, thanking all of the emergency services professionals that uh, pitched in. Uh, it would take too long for me to recognize each and one of them, but I can tell you that behind the scenes, the support was 150% from each of these gentlemen and their agencies and their uh, personnel. And so uh, from my perspective, first I'd like to say thanks to each and every one of them and ask that you give them a round of applause because they, they gave you 150% to protect you at this time. I'd also like to thank uh, all the firefighters that came to support uh, the Montgomery County effort. Um, while many of you saw the uh, smoke and you saw the uh, size of the smoke and the fire, um, the firefighters had a different perspective. And a hundred foot flame coming right at you is pretty frightening. And in spite of the uh, danger to themselves, the danger uh, to each other, they stood tall and they protected everything they could. And we hate that we lost anything, but I will tell you, I'm so proud of the firefighters and their effort because they saved so many things that by all rights should never have been saved. And it was because of their heroism, their effort, and their professionalism that many, many families today have a home to go back to. And so I'd like to ask you to thank the firefighters for what they do. In retrospect, when you look back on the event, first, I hope we never have to do this again. But keep in mind a couple thoughts. We lost 76 houses in three counties. We lost 20,000 acres of timber and uh, land. The economic impact was substantial. But we saved over 10,000 homes in an area that has no fire hydrants, no water. That's an amazing accomplishment by the emergency services profession. And most importantly, we did it without a single loss of life. Not one person lost their life. We can rebuild the homes, we can rebuild the buildings, but you can't replace someone's life. And I'll, I'll tell you a short story of why I'm so proud. First, there was a, a gentleman that I met in my uh, travels, and he wanted to say something to me. He said, you know, he said, I would have died in this fire. But my 10-year-old neighbor boy came and woke me up and got me alive and out of the house before the fire consumed my home. I lost everything, but I'm alive. And I, I would tell you, that's a tribute to the effort that you saw from the community and from the citizens as we all came together to do what needed to be done to protect our homes and our community and our neighbors. And last but not least, I'd like to thank the citizens of Magnolia because on your own, without anyone guiding you, coaching you, or training you, or preparing you, you recognized what needed to be done, you came together for the good of everyone, and to protect and help support the effort on the fire ground. It's really the firefighters who fought the fire and the citizens of Magnolia who came together to support the effort that really deserve uh, the credit. And so on behalf of all of us uh, who have the pleasure of working with y'all. Thank you so much. Well, it's a great pleasure of mine to introduce our, our next speaker, our Congressman Kevin Brady.
Mayor, thank you very much for having me here today. We, this is really this is really a day of Thanksgiving. Uh, so thankful that not a single life was lost. And you think about those 10,000 folks who came back to home with all their belongings and all their memories. Think about the people who went back to their small business, their livelihood. And they did so only because we had firefighters, men and women, we had law enforcement, we had school district, we had first responders, churches overflowing with help, volunteers bringing food and everything together. Uh, we are very thankful and so appreciative uh, to those who made this day possible. And that appreciation for our firefighters and, and first responders, I had the opportunity to tour the area with Sheriff Gage and um, you know, I, I knew our firefighters were remarkable. I had no idea they were that remarkable. They would save homes literally, and where the fire line was up to within a couple feet of the front door in the back as well, and they do at this house, and they do it at the next house, and they do it at the house after. And all those memories and all those belongings were saved because of them. And there's no question in my mind, and in yours either, they saved Magnolia. They saved our community, and they saved a lot of our history together. So thank you so much for all you did. And really, too, it's a day of pride. You know, this country faces a lot of challenges, and there's some things I think are heading the wrong direction, but I know this. Magnolia is what's right about America. These men and women are what's right about America. And we need more of it. Tell you what, uh, I want to thank, I brought, uh, I, I couldn't help myself. Um, we had the opportunity to go on the House floor the other day to tell the nation about Magnolia and about what happened here, and we, we spoke from the heart about it. But I also today wanted to bring from the United States House of Representatives a congressional commendation uh, to each of these men and women, their organizations, for all they did to save our community, to the Magnolia Volunteer Firefighters, led by Fire Chief Gary Vincent, who showed it, showed us all how it's done. Chief Vincent, thank you so much. <laughs> the Montgomery County Fire Marshal Jimmy Williams, who is a natural born leader, who stands tall in so many of these emergencies. Uh, Jimmy, thank you for all you do. To our school superintendent, Ty Stevens, you and I know the churches in our schools bring us together. They weave this community together, and Ty was just remarkable in opening that school and doing what it took to make sure our firefighters and our volunteers and everyone was taken. Uh, no stone was left in turn to help these folks, and your staff, Todd, was just amazing. Thank you. Montgomery County Emergency Operations Management's been through a lot of things, a lot of hurricanes and, and a lot of flooding and now wildfires. I know when we work with them from the federal level on issues, Judge Sandler is everywhere during these emergencies. His team is everywhere. His commissioner's court are backing us 110%. So Judge Sandler, thank you for your leadership and service. You know, it, um, I got to ride with him, and he's, uh, um, people love him and respect him because uh, he takes seriously protecting us day and night in a county that's just growing by leaps and bounds. I'm honored to thank and give my appreciation to our sheriff, Tommy Gage. You know, uh, the chief talked a bit about the help we got from all around the country and around Texas. Uh, I really appreciate, we all do, the Tri-County Volunteer Fire Department led by Chief Freddie Williams. Chief, you here today? Let's thank him. He was here when we needed him. And same goes for Standing Legs, Planterville, Stoneham Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, they were here uh, when we needed them. Thank you very much to that department. Frank, uh, yeah. 
it was interesting, you know, the uh, federal government uh, does its best to help where it can. It sent a team, California Interagency Incident Management Team, that's a long title, number four, uh, led by Frank Mosbacher. And I tell you what, I think when he came to Magnolia, they got to see the way it ought to be done. Uh, when we, I got to tour the Ag Barn with Carrie Hefter, I saw the work that H-E-B and Gary did, bring in those hot meals. We saw the, the lines of barbecue and the clothing and the food. And when they, when Magnolia, when they were running short, they put the call out on Facebook and three hours later, the Ag Barn, those tables were overflowing again. We so much appreciate the California Interagency Group, but, but I really appreciate the volunteers who supported our firefighters, men and women alike. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor Todd uh, doesn't take much credit for himself, but the city of Magnolia was everywhere and so helpful. Mayor, thank you for your leadership as well. You know, we talked about this being a, a county-wide and region-wide effort. Conroe Police Chief uh, Philip uh, Dupree was here to back up uh, our Police Chief uh, Barra and his amazing officers. Chief, thank you so much. <laughs> Judge Sadler already said this, but um, Craig, Doyle take, Craig Doyle takes his job seriously for representing this precinct. And he puts together a team that cares about uh, this community. And when I see Commissioner Doyle, everywhere I see Commissioner Doyle, I see Charlie Riley, I see our great constable, David Hill. Join me in thanking all of them for the great work. And, and it was mentioned to by the chief, but Tom Ball Police Department uh, with uh, Chief uh, Hauk uh, pitched in. And I know this too, I listen to our firefighters. Um, and they told us, told me, that uh, the Texas Forestry Service uh, was a big help uh, in this fire. And the U.S. Fire Service, uh, uh, with those, as that young boy said, that ginormous plane, you know, the helicopters that helped us. Um, our firefighters needed that backup, and I'm so appreciative for both the U.S. and Texas Forest Service, and I think you ought to be as well. So let's thank them. <laughs> With that, this is a great day to Christian, the volunteers who brought us all together again. In Magnolia, we have a lot to be proud of. This is a community of unity, and as David Hill said, it is God's country. Boy, God has been shining a light on us. Thank you so much. Let's just give one last hand of applause to these guys and their leadership and what they've done for this community and this county. Just want to thank everybody for coming out, the volunteers that put this together. Uh, it's a great event. It's good for the community. Gets us all together, gets us out, lets us meet others, and we can celebrate the job that was done with these fires. Again, thank you all for coming out and enjoy the rest of the evening. Before I leave, one shameless plug. The Lions Club is having their turkey shoot this weekend. It was today and will continue tomorrow from noon to five. <laughs>